Good morning, everybody. As you know, my name is Joe Gallagher. I'm the CEO for the First Nations Health Council, and I suppose the CEO for the First Nations Health Society. Um, just want to acknowledge Coast Salish territory in which the meeting's been held today of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people, and also acknowledge the elders and the community leaders and the community health workers that are here, as well as the community, our government partners, the people working in the health authorities in the federal and provincial systems, for your interest and participation in today's, today's event. In, um, in just sort of reading the, uh, the description of this morning, welcome to the Health Actions Day highlights a progress made over the last year and how it is changing the ways which partners work together, featuring tripartite year in review as a summary of progress made. So people are aware that the review is in your, um, your packages and that um, both Yusuf and Andy have talked about some of the things that we're doing on the health action side and in relation to the overall work. So, so what I thought I would do is um, speak a little bit in terms of some of the questions that were being asked and try and put that into context about um, how how I think we're moving things forward um, in, in the work that we do. And, and first of all, as I mentioned, um, being the CEO in the position that I'm in, I, I feel that I have many, many bosses. I have a health council that has a responsibility to implement the health plan and to provide leadership and support First Nations communities across the province. And now we have a board of directors that is here to run the operations of the society, the business arm. And, and there are very different needs that both of them have. And in addition to that, we have um, our partners at the table, the federal and provincial governments, with a whole series and list of issues and priorities for themselves. And, and within all that, we have a conversation that we need to have with all of you. Whether you're from a First Nations community, you're from a government department or agency, everybody needs to be part of this conversation, and it's a big one. And so the relationships are, without a doubt, very, very complex in terms of finding a way to to move the plan forward in, in a good way where everyone feels that they can be part of it and they have the, the meaningful role and, and that they're involved in a process that, that provides value in terms of what they see the, the overall implementation of the health plan means to them. One of the things that I wanted to do was to just mention that um, in the presentation this morning with the two co-chairs and, and yesterday as well, um, people talked about the uh, Transform Change Accord, the agreement reached in Kelowna in 2005 and signed by the Prime Minister of Canada, the Premier of British Columbia, and the First Nations Leadership Council. I think it's really important that we remember that that agreement called for 10-year plans in a number of areas, not just health. It also talked about commitments in education, housing and in infrastructure, and economic development. And it's important for us to remember that because we can't do everything through this health plan that everyone is talking about. We can do some things, but we can't do everything. And those other commitments are being addressed through other councils and other work that the Leadership Council, the member organizations, the Union of BC Indian Chiefs, the First Nations Summit, the BC Assembly of First Nations are undertaking through different initiatives. The First Nations Health Council has recognized that and is looking to try and see how they can have conversations with other people working some of those other areas and that without addressing the social determinants of health overall, we will not truly change the health outcomes of, of First Nations people in this province. So I think that's an important context for us to remember because sometimes when those of us that work in the health society um, go into our offices, we, we need to be able to focus on, on, a, on an area of work where we can actually make progress. And we get to the point of spreading ourselves so thin, just like everyone at home, that we have, have a difficult time making sure we can make extreme advances based on the commitments that we have today. And in the tripartite health plan and the transform and change accord First Nations health plan, we have some very, very important areas of work that we can really make some good strides forward. I, I wanted to um, talk a little bit about you know, what it is we're doing from a big picture point of view. In, in my mind, uh, it, it's about a system change. It's about the fact that um, you know, we, we want to be able to talk about health from the perspective of, of the First Nations uh, phil philosophy, a, a wellness perspective, a holistic perspective. We know today that the way the health system works, and Grand Chief Kelly talks about it as a sickness system, uh, we, we're, it's all about treatment of, of people once they're sick. It's about measuring that sickness. The um, PHO report does that. We, we know that we don't measure wellness, and that's something that we need to talk about and find a way to bring that forward in the conversation. The work that we've been carrying out through the Health Council, and we've talked about this last year, uh, and, and probably the year before, is that, um, when the health plans were introduced, and even before the tripartite health plan was, was actually signed, gathering wisdom was held. And that was because the conversation needed to begin. 
the conversation needed to start with First Nations people across the province to put definition to what this plan meant to everyone. And, and since then, we've talked about um, community engagement hubs. On the health action side, when we were working with the Health Council prior to the society being put in place, we had big challenges in trying to figure out how to effectively communicate with all First Nations in the province. And we still have that challenge today. We have not achieved what we need to yet in that area. But community engagement hubs were for the Health Council, a way of moving that forward. We talked about supporting communities that wanted to work together in this health plan. We'd provide resources for them so that, as health directors had, had indicated to me many times over, they did not have to do this off the side of their desk. So the idea about creating community engagement hubs were to ensure that communities were encouraged to work in collaboration, that they would have proactive resources dedicated to communication, collaboration, and planning, just those three areas. And that would give us an opportunity to have people working with communities, with all communities eventually, that would be able to feed into planning processes, collaborative discussion, and, and ensure that there was adequate communication for all levels. We have taken a bit of time getting that moving forward, but um, as of this point in time, this year, with, with a first um, it's taken a couple of years to really have some of this really take hold. We have about 150 of our communities organized within 20, around 24 hubs. And this is their first year where they're getting involved in securing their work plan and their funding ar arrangements through the First Nations Health Society now to start implementing some of that kind of work. So we're really at the beginning of all that. And there's still another 50 some odd communities to go. In addition to that, we have um, uh, we have established in two of the regions so far, and we're looking to go into the other regions, uh, community developer liaison positions, which are there to support those people working in hubs, but more importantly to reach out to those communities that are in that health authority region that are not part of a hub. And so at this point in time, we have um, an individual in Vancouver Island and an individual in the Interior Health Authority. We continue to make, try and make efforts to achieve that same kind of support in the other regions. And part of that discussion uh, requires uh, what we're trying to do is also to achieve a partnership with the, the health authority around making a linkage to the things that they do because we recognize the importance of how the health authority needs to be part of the tripartite health plan um, process. And, and so in the, other, in the two regions that I mentioned, the Interior and Vancouver Island, they're actually uh, co-hosting that position with us. So it creates a linkage between the, the uh, working, workings of the health council and the health authority in terms of communication with our First Nations communities. 